I haven't been this excited about a desktop rice since I made XFCE look like Windows XP. This is Chad WM, which is a project aimed at making DWM as beautiful as possible. Now, if you aren't familiar with DWM, it's part of the suckless tool set, which is all about minimizing bloat and creating programs that just don't suck as much. All of these suckless tool configurations are done by editing C files directly, which sounds intimidating at first, but since the source code for DWM and most other suckless tools is so small and straightforward, it's actually pretty easy to do yourself, even if you aren't familiar with C code. And even though there's a lot of functionality that is missing with a base DWM installation, you can very easily add patches for practically any extra feature you could think of. And these pre-built packages like ChadWM already have most of those pre-applied. And speaking of patches, there's one that I think might actually be kind of unique to this DWM build, although I'm sure it could be patched into others, and that is tag previews. So these icons here at the top of my screen represent tags, which are basically like virtual desktops or workspaces, and tag preview makes it so that you can see a preview of what windows are open on that tag when you hover over it. So here you can see I've got my two terminals open. Over here you can see that I've got my browser open. So that's really handy if you don't want to have to manually go through all five of these different tags or technically 15 tags because I've got three monitors and the tags on each monitor are independent of one another. Uh, so yeah, that could save you a lot of time, especially with a base DWM config because I think the base one has like nine tags or something like that on it. So, you know, that's gonna save you some time with figuring out uh, where your programs are open. And if you haven't used a tiling window manager before, then it might take some getting used to the whole tag system and, you know, losing track of where your applications are and things like that. Uh, so yeah, tag preview is really, really handy. Now, one of the great things about minimalist software is the minimal amount of dependencies that are needed to install it. So if I scroll down to the requirements section here, this is pretty much all that's necessary to get started with ChadWM. Uh, the most important dependencies are gonna be the Xset root package. And this makes it so that you can have these different colors in your DWM status bar. The JetBrains Mono Nerd font is also really important, although it can be any of the nerd fonts. This makes it so that all of these icons uh, will actually work. Like basically the nerd fonts include a whole bunch of icons in them as well. Uh, so like this plug and the CPU thing here, this Firefox icon and this Chrome icon, none of those would work in DWM or anywhere else if you don't have them installed. Now with a base DWM config, these different tags are just numbers. So like if you're okay with that, if you don't wanna have any icons in your status bar or anywhere else, then you actually don't need to have the X set root package uh, or the mono, the nerd font package rather. And also this shell, even though it says that this shell uh, dash is a requirement, I'm pretty sure it's not because I'm using Z shell here on my system and I haven't run into any issues so far. So I'm pretty sure you can keep your current shell. It's probably gonna be bash or ZSH. And oh, all the talk about shells just reminded me about terminals. So typically people end up using DWM with ST, which is the suckless or simple terminal. It's actually what I have open here. And just like DWM, a bare bones config of ST has very, very few features. So if you're going to use ST with a build like this for DWM, I really recommend using one of the pre-built ones like Psydux ST, which he calls the snazzy terminal. It's suckless plus beautiful. And if we look through this uh, repo here, you can see that this is what his uh, suckless terminal looks like. There's a lot of functionality in this that a base ST config does not have. Like if we look at his patches here, all right, scroll back is a patch that he's applied. In a base ST config, you don't have any scrolling. Clipboard functionality is another one. I think you can paste into ST, but you can't normally copy from it, which can be really frustrating. 
Uh, alpha transparency, you gotta have that if you're gonna post your rice to Unix porn. It's very important so that you can get all the updates. Uh, and there's a lot of other stuff here too, like the X resources config. This one's really big too. So the X resources config makes it so that ST, and I think he also has this applied for DWM, it makes it so that the colors that you see here are taken from your X resources instead of you having to manually patch them in to DWM and ST and all of your other programs. And it also supports live reloading, as you can see here. So he's able to basically change his theme in ST without having to recompile and relaunch ST, okay? Without this, that's what you have to do, recompile and relaunch as you'll probably see later on in the video. Uh, so let me actually show you a DWM configuration real quick for, like let's say you wanted to change what shell you're using. Let's say you don't wanna use ST for some reason. So this is the config.h file for DWM or chadwm, and we wanna go down to the section where they have the key definitions. All right, and actually let me close this just had to have uh, you know HTOP open to show off my heck and rice. And let's make this a little bit bigger. So that takes up the whole screen. Okay, so uh, here are the key definitions. And then down here, I think we actually have the individual commands. Um, yeah, here we go. So this is the line that will launch ST. If you wanted to use like Xterm, for example, just change this to Xterm. You gotta make sure it's the proper command name. So I don't know if like Xterm is a capital X or whatever, but that's all you would have to do to change your terminal there. Now, like I said, this configuration is all written in C, but it's really straightforward. So like, let's go through uh, these two lines here. So this one launches Rafi, which is just a, basically a command launcher right and uh, or actually it's a menu uh, for launching commands you could change this to like d menu if you wanted instead that's more of a proper suckless tool but honestly rafi is not that much more bloated than d menu and it just looks a lot better in my opinion so i stick with rafi um now these commands here as you can see they've got the uh spawned shcmd which is basically just saying to pass this command here like Rafi or pass this command here ST into a non-interactive shell session. All right, so basically you're spawning a program. And this XK return, this just means your return key or your enter key on your keyboard, which is gonna be used in combination with the mod key to execute this whole command. Okay, so same thing here. The mod key in combination with XKC, which is just the letter C, the C key on your keyboard, will launch this whole command. Okay, now the uh, mod key might be a little bit confusing. So if we go up here to where the mod key is defined. Okay, so here it says define mod key mod for mask. So mod for mask stands for the Windows key or the super key on your keyboard. And you could change this to be a different key if you wanted to. If you ever get confused with these mod keys and what they mean, you can just run the command X mod map, which is going to tell you what each of those key bindings are. So like you can see that mod one here is left alt, mod two is numlock, and then mod four down here is super or that Windows key. And in a DWM configuration and also in an ST configuration, uh, you'll see some lines here like the mod key control mask and then mod key shift mask. All this means is that you have to use con the control key or the shift key in combination with your mod key. And then sometimes you'll have them where there's both of them. So it's like the mod key, control mask, shift mask. Usually you don't wanna put the masks and certainly not multiple masks on something unless it's a command that you're not gonna be running all the time. So as you'll see here and as you do your configurations, 
you're typically gonna want to make the commands that you use the most to be the simplest ones to do on your keyboard. So that's the reason why the terminal is bound to the mod key plus return because that's one of the simplest actions that you can do on your keyboard. Now, like I said earlier, one of the patches that was applied to the suckless configs here allows you to set your colors here in your X resources. And this is also where you would set your font type and your font size. So if you're not satisfied uh, with the size of the nerd font in DWM, you can change it here. I think the DWM or rather the nerd fonts tend to run a little bit small because I think in like XFCE, I have my font size or my pixel size, my font set to 12. Here I have it set to 16, but you know, you're gonna change this to be however you want it to be. Um, and so you can go through all of these configurations here to change the colors. And you also get the previews for what kinds of colors they are. At least this is the case if you're using NV Chad, which is Psydux configuration for NeoVim. Uh, if you don't have that, then you might not have these little color palettes. But honestly, if you were gonna be doing major changes to your X resources file, I would recommend this utility called terminal.sexy. So that's the URL uh, to access it from your browser. Actually, I'll just go ahead and pull it up for you guys here. So it's terminal.sexy. And this can be used to do configurations for X resources, which is the default one, but there's a bunch of other ones um, like Vim or you know any program that you can write essentially. You can do it with a GUI using terminal.sexy. So this is a really handy program if you're looking to get your rice just right. And of course this bar at the top, the colors are set here with status 2D. Uh, you could use the mod key B command, uh, or actually I got to do the right one, mod key B, <laughs> to remove this bar if you want your uh, windows to be a little bit larger. I'm not gonna bore you by going over every single shortcut because again, you're gonna customize that stuff anyway. Uh, the last thing that I really wanna show you is the script that is used for launching ST. So let me go ahead and open that up. Uh, I believe it's in scripts run. Okay, so this um, script, you would either put it in your Exinit or uh, attach it to LightDM or, or whatever your login manager is so that when you sign in, it automatically runs DWM for you. Or you can just run it from the TTY if you want to be a cool kid. Um, but one of the, uh, well, there's a few configurations that you can make in here. So of course, this is the one that sets your X resources file. Uh, this comes preset in there. The X backlight, this is gonna change the brightness of your screen. So you could also change this to be whatever brightness setting you want. Uh, and you can also change it in DWM after it's already been set. This is just changing the defaults. Um, down here, or actually I skipped over Fe. So Fe is what's going to set your background wallpaper, all right? So you just have to point Fe to wherever your wallpaper is. I'm using the, uh, what is it called? Like Retro Wave Windows XP Bliss with uh, the heckin' cool Japanese letters and stuff <laughs> set here. Uh, so yeah, you can do that. If you don't set it here, then you're just not gonna have a desktop wallpaper. It's just gonna be all black, which, um, you know, wallpapers are a little overrated anyway, right? Like it's supposed to be doing work on your computer. So you don't actually need to set this. The uh, X set R rate. What this does is it sets the rate on your keyboard for how keys will repeat. So what this is doing right here is 200 means it's gonna wait 200 milliseconds for repeating a key. And then 50 is gonna be 50 keystrokes per second that get repeated after that. So like if I spawn another terminal, for example, or actually let me do it in Vim. So when I'm in Vim, and of course when I'm in insert mode, or actually you don't have to be in insert mode if there's lines, but anyway, just insert mode to demonstrate this. If I press the J key, it's, 200 milliseconds are about a fifth of a second until it starts spamming more J keys. 
and then it's gonna spam J keys at 50 keys per second. Uh, so changing this is really handy, and same thing with the backspace. It, you know, 200 milliseconds, and then it starts going at 50 uh, keystrokes per second. So this can be really handy for changing the scroll pace that you have in Vim or any other program where you're using uh, keys on your keyboard to scroll. But another thing that you could do here is challenge yourself to get even better at Vim. Because with Vim, you typically want to make movements that are as simple and as quick as possible. Like if you wanted to go to the bottom of a document, you wouldn't just scroll all the way down with J, you would use capital G, or you would use word movements to work to move through words instead of just holding down H or L and you know scrolling through one character at a time. So what you could do is change this to X set R off, which is going to disable key repeats altogether, meaning that if you physically press and hold down the J key or physically press and hold down the backspace, it's only gonna go back one. You'd have to you know, lift your key and you know, you'd have to spam it a whole bunch of times like this in order to get whatever movement you want, which is going to frustrate you and hopefully <laughs> force you to get smarter at using Vim. Now, one last thing that I wanna show you is this xrandar command. This is something I actually manually added to this startup script in order to fix the orientation of my screens. Now you don't have to do this if you just have one monitor or if you actually plugged your monitors in in order, which obviously I didn't do. Um, but if your monitors are out of whack, like if the, you know, if they're just not next to each other the way they're supposed to be, you can easily fix this by first launching a render. And what this will do, this is basically just a GUI that lets you change the order of your monitors if you're using Xorg. And so I've got everything set up here where HDMI zero is far right, DP one is center, DP three is far left. And what I can do here is download this configuration file here, and I'll just call it test2.sh. And then if I open this up in Vim, You can see that it's the same xrandar command that I have over here, where it's telling DWM or, or Xorg really where to place my screen so that when DWM launches and you scroll all the way over to the left, you don't suddenly warp over to the right monitor or vice versa. And uh, same thing if you're using the hotkeys to go to different monitors, like it's um, comma to go to the left on mine and it's period to go to the right. That way it's not warping you around in the wrong direction. So make sure that you um, paste in that xrandar command into, um, you really just have to make sure that it comes before the, um, when Chad WM actually gets launched, so it doesn't necessarily have to be right here, but you know, just make sure it's in there so that all of your screens are set up the way that you want and you're good to go with your sexy suckless rice. So that pretty much covers Chad WM. Links to everything are gonna be in the description of this video. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and buy some of my merch from my online store, base.win. 10% store-wide discount when you pay in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.